This is Chuck Schaefer of HCM-TV, and I am joined by Caroline Paxman, President of the Americas for SHL. Caroline, thank you for joining me today. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Caroline, I'd like to start our conversation with a, a little bit of the organizational development change that's been going on with SHL. The company is now a part of the Corporate Executive Board. Yeah. With this transition, how does SHL see the world differently, and how is what's the change in terms of company direction or product roadmaps? Yeah, great, great. Thank you for starting with that question. Um, first of all, I'd like to say we're, we're really thrilled to be part of the Corporate Executive Board. Um, and I get asked this question a lot, and I think um, part of the things that we're most excited about is we're focused in similar areas. So we both really care passionately about providing research and data insights and best practices to the client organizations that we work with. So in that sense, we feel like it's a really, really good combination. Um, we also have different uh, strategic presence around the world. So SHL has a large global presence and then coupled with CEB's strength in North America and increasing focus on emerging markets, that made that a really good combination as well. So, uh, so in some senses, lots of excitement about what the future holds in terms of working out how we collaborate together and bring those research and best practices to the organizations we work with. But on the other hand, uh, SHL is going to continue to focus on the things that we do best, which is really around talent measurement and delivering people intelligence to drive business outcomes for our clients. Very good. SHL has gathered the data and predictive information on about 25 million employees globally, including about 40% of the Fortune 500. Right. What is the business problem that having this data solves? What I think organizations struggle with today, uh, you know, uh, and the show that we're at here today has got a, a tremendous amount of uh, HCM system vendors out there. So the change that we've seen is there's lots of automation of human capital processes, but it hasn't really told organizations anything new about the quality of the talent that they're managing. So the insight that uh, my organization focuses around is providing that people intelligence and really arming with organizations about with objective and actionable insight to the quality of that talent so they can really make informed business decisions. Uh, and it's not just at an individual level, that can be at the team level, the organizational unit level, and what the business challenge having all this assessment data really solves for us is being able to compare and benchmark for organizations as well across their talent to other organizations' talent within and benchmark across industry and geography as well. So that's really what it gets at. You know, Joseph Walker recently wrote that the function of human resources is increasingly being tied to software and data analytics. Yeah. How do you think this combination plays out for the average HCM business or business manager? Yeah, that's a really great question. And I honestly think that sometimes uh, the organizations that we work with can, can frankly get a little distracted by the technology and, and kind of focus a little too much on, on the, the tools to solve the challenge. Uh, so, you know, the, the stance that we take here is focus on the business challenge and the problem we're trying to solve. So work on the process first and then layer in the technology and the analytics to support that. Um, so some of the advice that we would give the organizations that we work with are things along the lines of make sure that you have a great organizing framework in place around the competency framework that you're working with that you're clear on the processes and how that feeds into the business strategy of the organization. And then you look for the tools to support and automate and make that process more efficient. Uh, and then analytics is the layer around that to make sure that you're making the right decisions along the way. But frankly, you could get to some of the analytics part without having all the tools and all the bells and whistles in place. So I think it's a kind of a layer it up and approach and don't get distracted by having to have all the technology and all the bells and whistles in place. Let me ask you a little bit about how some disruptive technologies may be changing this marketplace. Yeah. How do you see social media or maybe mobility adding value to talent assessment? Yeah. Uh, that's a really good question now to you, and obviously it's a, a sort of fast-moving area. Uh, at this stage, it's it's we're seeing this much more as a, a sort of a dialogue and an opportunity for the organization 
uh, to, to share more about themselves as an employer brand and attract uh, candidates or potential job seekers into the organization. So we see that there's a place for assessment playing into that, but it's more of a dialogue uh, in that sort of social media sphere than the sort of pure assessment, where we still want to make sure that that's done in the right way and in an appropriate way. Um, so that's how I'd answer that a little bit. But what I will say on the mobility front, it's very fast moving and certainly our client organizations are partnering with us and we're certainly starting to see more assessment done in a mobile way, but a little further into the recruitment life cycle, frankly, than, than in the social media sphere, if you like, in a little bit more controlled way, but certainly an increasing amount of devices. Okay. Caroline, HR and business leaders know that performance measurements are critical to measuring progress or yeah. making adjustments or course corrections. Yeah. But the key to performance metrics is measuring the right metrics. Yeah. As a provider of talent measurement and management yeah. and the benchmarking data that you deliver, how would you advise a HR or business manager to determine the most salient or important metrics they should be measuring? Yeah, that's another great question. Uh, we really encourage the organizations that we work with to kind of think about a whole person approach. So, you know, for any one industry, the metrics might be slightly different that they're looking to measure. But the way that we approach it is needing to take kind of a whole person view, which would be taking a look at not only the results that an employee is delivering, but also the behavior that they're deploying to get to those results. So how good are they working in teams? How good are they applying analytical skills and thinking about the big picture? And then the third component is what potential does that employee have to grow and stretch into, you know, subsequent you know, roles of a kind of higher levels of responsibility and authority. So it's kind of that combination of potential, behavior, and results is the way that we think about this and kind of encourage organizations to think about and evaluate their talent. SHL is the largest provider of employee assessments. Yeah. And this is a big but very fragmented market. If we look ahead a few years, how do you suspect this market is going to evolve or change? Yeah, that's another really good question. Uh, the, first, the first answer to that, I think, is linking, linking back to an earlier question you asked me, which is, we are going to see uh, assessments being used across a plethora of devices. Um, kind of earlier in that conversation and dialogue, uh, and frankly, I think you'll see a little bit potentially more portability of assessment results between one organization and another. So I think that's going to be one of the key changes. Another one is, uh, that there are sort of quite, while assessment is quite widely used today, it's certainly not across the enterprise. And I think you'll see increasing adoption and usage of assessment uh, as, we, as we progress, including in areas around things like fit to culture. So we're starting to see many more organizations use an assessment kind of across every single role within their organization to say, would you truly fit the culture and values that we represent, whether you're going to be in finance or you're going to be in a sales role or you're going to be a front-end customer service rep, whatever it might be. So that's an increasing trend that we're seeing too. Uh, and the third trend that I would point to is, you know, obviously we've pioneered the idea of having talent analytics and benchmarking yeah. across organizations. I think you're going to be seeing much more benchmarking and really intelligent use of the data to get at you know, really what are the best sources of talent or where should we cite the next uh, contact center facility or whatever it might be. Do you think that we might get to a point where the talent management software vendors start leveraging their customer data in order to provide data services? I think we will. I okay. do. I, I'm not exactly sure what that will look and feel like today, but one of the things I'm, I'm really intrigued about when we talk to our clients, I think they all want the magic decoder ring, right, that, that brings <laughs> together all of that um, human capital information right. together. Right. So again, as with most of the important trends in our industries, I think it's going to be very client driven in terms of how can we use data more strategically and how, do, how can we bring together data on um, you know, the talent measurement data that we have, together with benchmarks, together with performance results, and we're getting there, but it's not all the way there yet, and I think we'll, we'll start to see more of that over time. Well, with that insight, I think we're at a good break point to conclude our conversation. Great. This is Chuck Schaefer. I've been joined by Caroline Paxman, President of the Americas for SHL. Caroline, thank you for joining me today. Thank you so much.